Um, today with me is my colleague uh, Quinn Lam, uh, who is going to assist if needed. Um, we are going to do some hands-on, so if you want to get your hands dirty, you know, no problem, we'll do that. There will be a lot of demos during this session. Um, the idea is to give you a, an overview on how you can actually deploy NMT 2.0 machine translation uh, with our Edge Cloud architecture. Uh, so we'll do some installations. I'll try to minimize the number of slides I'm going to use and do as much uh, demos as I can. This session you know, can be very interactive. Feel free to ask questions uh, when, uh, when needed. Uh, so, um, and I apologize in advance for the screen. So I will show some like Windows machine. The resolution is not great. So uh, uh, if you want to try on your machines and do some installations yourself, you know, feel free to do that. Um, and if it's really bad, I switch to screenshots. I have a lot of screenshots as well. OK, cool. So from an agenda perspective, uh, we'll just quickly cover the SDL machine translation solutions. Uh, then we'll get our hands dirty. We'll deploy uh, the SDL machine translation edge, which is the on-premise machine translation solution. And then we'll configure it to use Edge Cloud. So we'll show you how to configure this hybrid model where you install machine translation on-premise and we can actually connect it to machine translation in the cloud and spin off uh, translation engines from there. And at the end of the session, when, once we'll have everything configured, we'll also touch the APIs. So I will show you how to perform translation, not just with the UI, but also with the API. And again, we'll have some hands-on, and uh, we'll show you some samples of code that you can use to uh, get your translation done through uh, APIs. OK? Great. So if you want to do it yourself, um, you can. Uh, you can download the Linux version of Machine Translation Edge. So I prepared some links. If you want to take a photo, if you want to use your mobile phone to get the links, you can use the QR codes. Um, so you have the Linux version. You have the Windows version that you can use. And I also prepared um, a QR code to download the configuration files that we're going to use. OK, so there is a, a license that you will be able to use to enable Edge and connect it to uh, Be Global. Uh, the Big Global account is valid until the end of this week, uh, so you can use it to do some tests if you want. Okay, for everyone, everyone managed to take a picture of this? Yes? Cool. So let's go. Um, one of the advantages of SDL machine translation is the flexibility you get when you want to deploy it. So you can either you know, consume machine translation from the cloud, this is the part which is on the right, which is hosted by us in Europe. Uh, or you can consume it on your premises. And this is by deploying uh, Hedge. So Hedge used to be known as uh, ETS, so Enterprise Translation Server. This is now SDL Machine Translation Hedge. And the Cloud Machine Translation was known as B Global. This is now SDL Machine Translation Cloud. So Cloud is hosted by us in Europe. For Edge, it's hosted by customers by you. Um, so you can host it on your premise, you can put it in your own private cloud, your own virtual machines. Optionally, it can be hosted by SDL if you don't have hardware, you don't have machine, but you still want your um, environment to be fully segregated, fully hosted in the region you want. This can also be hosted by us. So what we're going to do today is to deploy this and we'll connect it to cloud through the Edge Cloud architecture. So from uh, an OS perspective, Edge is supported on both Windows and Linux. Okay, so we have installers for um, the different versions. We support a you know, wide range of operating systems, so it goes from you know, Windows 7, 8, 10. So you can actually install it on your desktop. You don't need a server. You can install Edge on a standard Windows machine as long as you know, it's compliant with these requirements. Uh, you won't be able to install a lot of language pairs, uh, uh, but you will be able to connect it to uh, Big Global and leverage uh, or to, or to the cloud and leverage the cloud performance to uh, 
enable some translation engines. And we also support Windows Server from 2012, 2016 to 2019, so all the latest versions. From Linux perspective, we also support multiple distributions, so CentOS 7, Ubuntu, and also Red Hat Enterprise Linux, no? version 7. Again, any question, let me know. From uh, hardware configuration, these are the requirements for uh, the Hedge application itself. So it's like very small footprint. You need basically one CPU core, one gigs of RAM, and some hard drive space. So you know it starts with four. Uh, depending on how much content you want to translate, you might need more uh, hard drive, but this is basically the minimum requirements. And for each language pair that you want to install locally, uh, depending on the throughput and the performance you expect, you might need between one to four CPU cores, four gigabytes of RAM, and four gigabytes of hard drive. And again, these are the minimum. If you want to reach really high throughput, you probably need to add uh, more CPU cores to reach the performance you need. And if you want to use the on-premise trainer, so we'll talk about it in the second session. So today we will install Edge, we'll configure it with Edge Cloud, and after lunch, we'll have our session on the best practices to adapt Neural Machine Translation will use the on-premise trainer with the adaptable language pairs. Uh, specifically for this component of Edge, you need a GPU with at least 12 gigs of RAM available. And we support NVIDIA, Tesla, GPU, so, you know, V100 and, uh, uh, and a couple more. Great, so if we look now at the installation checklist, so you know the things you need to do before you install uh, Edge. So first of all, you need to confirm that your operating system is supported. You know, don't install it directly on the Mac, it will not work. Um, verify that you have enough hardware to install it. Uh, then you need to download the installers. Uh, you need, if you want to install local language pair, to download also the language pairs installers. Um, and once you have downloaded everything you need, then you can install the application. Uh, critical step is to get a license for it. Uh, if you install it by default, it will not carry a license, so you won't be able to start anything. So you get a license, you install it, then you can install your language pair, uh, you can configure Edge Cloud, and then you can start translating immediately after this has been enabled. Yes? Sure, maybe. Um, Excuse me? Excuse me? Yes. yes. Is it possible to turn off these, just these lights, or maybe all the lights eventually? Or to make it a little bit more, uh, yeah. So we'll check. Um, great, so once everything is done, you can actually start translating immediately. We'll show this in a, in a moment. So what we're going to do today so we are going to, of course, install it on a uh, supported operating system. Uh, if you want, you can download the Edge installers. I already downloaded them. Uh, then we'll install the Edge application. Uh, I have provided in li a license in the configuration file. We'll install it. And then we'll configure Edge Cloud. So we'll be able to create translation engine by using um, Machine Translation Cloud. And we'll start translating with the web UI. And then we'll check the API. OK? Cool. So, let's start with the Edge installation. So for the installation, so you can use the packaged installer for Windows or for Linux. Okay, so, and during installation, you will have to provide uh, some information. Very important, when you run the installer, if you are on Windows, you run it as an administrator. If you are on Linux, you run it as root, or you use sudo to run it. Um, during the installation, you will define the installation folder. You need to select the mode, uh, and the first time you install Edge, you will need to define if it's the master host, so the first machine, or if it's a worker host. Edge can scale, of course, uh, vertically. You can add more RAM, more CPUs, more translation engines, but it can scale horizontally. So you can add worker hosts depending on the throughput you need. Then you'll define the username and password for the first administrator that you create. This is the one that you'll use to log in the first time. Uh, so you'll create a username and a password for it. Uh, it will ask you if you want to embed the, a the uh, API. So this is for uh, OEM uh, installations. Then you'll configure SSL 
Uh, this is an optional step. You can either install a self-signed certificate or disable SSL or import your own certificate. And that's it. Once you have defined this information, you know, installation will proceed. So I have a couple of slides. You'll get the slide, I believe. So uh, all the steps are documented. What I wanted to do is to do it live. So you can have a, a good understanding of how easy it is. Um, nothing hidden. We'll do it until it's work it works. So let me switch if I can. And again, I apologize in advance. If it's really too small and you can't read, I will, I will stop and I will just use slide. But let's try to do it. And if some of you want to do it on their own, feel free. Um, although it's only the two of us, so uh, I'm not sure about the support we can give you. But it's very easy and, and straightforward. So I have a Windows machine there. When you download, and sorry again but, but this bad resolution, I try to improve it. But uh, uh, So you have the installer. In the installer, you have a couple of files. There is one which is named setup win64. This is the one that you need to run to install the application. So I will right click on it and I will run it as administrator. Okay, very easy. So let's do this. You will have to, you know, acknowledge. Ah, of course, I started it earlier to make sure that it was working. Um, so this is what you get. Welcome to the wizard. So you get a UI. You will first accept the agreement. Then you will choose the installation directory. OK, nothing fancy at this stage. You can just change it if you want. Next. Then you will select the mode. Uh, so either it will work as uh, a master host or as a worker host. Right. So first time you install Edge, you need to select master host. This is you, the mandatory requirement to install your first master host. Do I want to install the embedded API? No, I don't need the embedded API. When you install Edge, it will come with the UI and the standard API. The embedded API is basically C++ and C Sharp uh, embedded API. These are typically for OEM only. So you can keep no. Then, yeah, I changed the resolution. So now my screen is not uh, great. Let me see if I can change this. Not really, but I know what to put there. So you need to put the first user email address. This is the first step. So let's go. We'll put mine. So you know French people use French keyboard, so okay. Like this. Okay. Then you need to put the name you want to display. Okay. Then you need to set your password. Okay, you confirm your password and then you hit next course. It's funny, huh? <laughs> Come on. Okay. Sorry, let me change again the screen resolution because this is all because I changed this. Okay, so, and I'm sorry, then you can't read, but. So I will keep it like this. Sorry about that. Um, actually, let me change back. It's not complicated. OK, then it asks about the SSL configuration.
Okay, so you can either decide not to use HTTP HTTPS, so it will not install it, but then you will need to access machine translation over port, uh, the default port, which is 8000 on HTTP, or you can use self-signed certificate. If you have your own certificate, you can actually import it at this stage. If you don't have it ready, then you can import it later uh, and configure it in the system. I would just not use HTTPS at this stage, hit next, and that's it. The system is ready to install. So if you manage to type your password twice properly, then you can just hit next, and it will install everything it needs. And the good thing is then we'll use a web UI, so I will use it from my desktop. The resolution should be a little bit better. So while it's installing, I want to show you how it also works on Linux, if you're interested. Are there Linux users, Mac users? Yes, I, it will be very fast. Huh? I, I won't do everything twice. So this is um, let me switch back to French keyboard. Yes. So I will SSH to uh, a Linux box, a CentOS 7 box, okay, where I have already downloaded. Uh, and sorry about the light. I, it seems that we can't turn it off. Um, I have downloaded the package. So I will unzip the SDL package. OK, so it will unzip everything. And you see that there is one uh, file that we want to run, which is the setups uh, dash uh, Linux hyphen uh, x64.run. So once it's extracted, I will just run it. OK, so let's go to the folder. Let me clear so people in the back can see. OK, and then I will use sudo to run as root. And I will start this setup Linux x64. So because this is CentOS, I don't have a UI. If you install it on Ubuntu, you have a UI. Uh, but you basically have to acknowledge the uh, license and read it carefully. Uh, press yes to accept it. Then you can also specify the directory where you want to install it. Yes, you can leave by default opt sdletes. Then again, select if you want to install as master or as a worker host. So we will use the first option, which is master. We won't install the API. And then, same thing, you need to configure your user, the name you're going to display, and then your password. Let's see if I'm better at this. Yes. And then select the HTTP. Uh, so just for the sake of the demo, I will say, OK, uh, I will choose option two. So we will then install the self-signed certificate. So you can see when you when we'll open both of them, and then ETS, and then it's going to install uh, ETS. Sorry. So let's go back to the other side, the other. Can you shut it down completely, or? Ah, ah. So I can't see you anymore, but as long as you can see the screen, that's, that's good. That's good. Uh, great. So back to Windows. As you can see, this uh, has been finished. If I click Finish, it will open a browser the first time with the name of the machine, and it will connect on port 8000. So port 8000 is the default port. You can change it to 80 or, or uh, 8443 uh, or anything you want. Huh? It's just a default port that we use for our web UI. On the Linux side, so it's almost complete. And that's it. So I now have two machines that are installed with a uh, Hedge master host. One is Windows and one is Linux. So you see, installation is really five minutes, huh? not more. So let's try now if I can connect to this Windows box from my uh, so it's, do I have my glasses somewhere? No, it's okay. So three, four, 
239, Let, let's connect from my machine now. Let's see if I can access. Let me verify that the port is open for this machine. Oh, actually, can you can you can you see there? Is it good enough or? Yeah, okay. checking if I'm using the right one. Okay, so I made a mistake in the uh, URL. Okay, so this is the Windows machine that we're accessing now. You can see the not secure because we're accessing over HTTP. Uh, and I can log in with my uh, credential. So the credential is used at installation. Okay. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Yes, cool. Let's try to see if we can connect to the Linux box now. No, actually, I have my IP there. OK, so in this case, I need to connect over HTTPS because I used an on port 8000 if it's open. So in this case, because I'm using a self-signed certificate, I have this warning. Uh, but b b basically, I can click Advanced and proceed. And then I will reach the uh, login UI. OK? So we can use either one or the other. Uh, it's basically the same master host with no configuration at this stage. So what do we need to do next? The first thing to do is to install a license. So this is the ETS Web UI. In the ETS Web UI, this is where a user will be able to do their translation once you know, a first translation engine will be started. And as the first admin, you have access to the Manage menu. So in the Manage menu, you have access to the different settings. Uh, and you have especially one option, which is called the deployment. In deployment. This is where you are going to configure your different hosts. So if you have just one host, it will appear here. And then you will be able to add job engines and translation engines. Uh, and then you will be able to add more hosts as you install uh, additional worker hosts uh, for the edge. So the first thing we can do here is to actually add a job engine. The job engine is the one that is going to process documents and translation requests. And it will segment them. And it will put them in a queue for a translation engine to translate. So we can add a job engine. Okay. At this stage, we have no language pair installed, so we can't add a translation engine. Huh? I don't have any language pair available. And I have my job engine. If I try to start my job engine, okay, so it will say starting. Is it going to succeed? Any guess? Succeed, not succeed? <laughs> Shall we start troubleshooting the server and see what's wrong? <laughs> About the resolution? Um, so it's going to fail. Actually, it's, it will remain in starting mode until it times out. Any reason, any idea why? Hmm? Hmm? No. Not, no, no, I'm authenticated. I'm all good. Any, any other idea? Yes, the license. I don't have a license. So the first thing you need to do, remember the checklist, once you have installed the Edge, you need to install a license. So the license, you can actually install it from this screen. So it's called Entitlements. Uh, the first time you install Edge, you can download a specific file, which is called the Entitlement Profile. So you can download it from the UI. I will put this on my desktop. And it looks like this. So it's basically a file. Let me, let me see if we can. I apologize again for this uh, resolution. Well, I can't even find the. Anyway, it will give you the name of the machine, 
the OS that is used, the number of cores that you have on this machine, the total memory, and it will have a specific signature that we're going to use to generate a license. So license for Edge are specifically linked to the master host from which you are getting this specific file. So when you need a license, you will send SDL support the this specific file that you get at installation, and they will generate a license for you, which is going to include uh, your different licenses. Once you get the license from SDL, you can click on Upload the license file. So let's click there. So if you used the QR code that I shared earlier, you will get uh, a file which is called SDL ETS. So we'll upload this. This is a license which is valid until the end of October. And once it's done, it will tell you how many language pairs you can install locally and how many process processing units you can use. Uh, knowing that processing units uh, are a unit that allows you to reach a throughput of 2,000 words per minute for each language pair. Uh, so in this case, uh, if I want to install a local language pair, I would need to change my license to allow me to use local language pair, and I will be able to allocate processing units to it. Because we are going to configure Edge Cloud, I don't need uh, any local language pair. And as you can see, now that I put a license, my job engine has actually started properly. So it, ca it can already process documents. So we have one last thing missing. Now we need a translation engine, right? So for this translation engine, because we have not installed any language pair, uh, I will actually use Edge Cloud architecture to connect to machine translation in the cloud and start translation engine using language pairs that are available uh, in my uh, MT Cloud subscription. So I can click on Configure Edge Cloud here. And this is where, so remember, machine translation cloud was called B Global. So you know, we are going to update our screens to reflect the new names, but uh, currently it's still saying B Global host name. So you have the API for B Global, which is already uh, enabled. And I will need to provide basically my API credentials to access my B Global subscription. Uh, so to enable Edge Cloud, you need Edge with a license, and you also need a subscription in B Global. So let's open. I have provided a file which is there. Yes. OK, so this is, and this will expire on Thursday, I think. But you can use it if you want to test. So let's go there. So I will provide first my client ID. So when you create uh, credentials, API credentials, you get a client ID in um, empty cloud. And I will enter the secret. So secret is there. OK, I can test. OK, Edge Cloud connection was successfully made. And then I can just enable it and save. So what's going to happen next? It will display all the language pairs that are available in the cloud as part of my subscription on the left. So I can see that I have now all these language pairs available. And I can just add translation engine on my edge by using any of these language pairs that is available without installing it locally. So let's use French, French to English, and let's add it. And I can add another one. Let's use, I don't know, German to English. OK? As you can see, there is also a third column, which is called training engines. So this is where you can actually add training engine for the trainer. And this is where training will take place when you use adaptable language pairs and you want to. And we'll see this uh, after lunch. So now that I added my translation engine, I can just start them. And you see it's very quick. OK, and I now have basically two language pairs available as part of my Edge deployment. And I can consume them directly from my UI. 
So I can keep auto detect, type some text. We'll detect that it's uh, actually uh, French, and it will uh, translate it directly to English. So it took us, what time is it? Yeah, 11.15, so 30 minutes hmm? on two systems. Yes, exactly, exactly. I have not configured the Linux box, but I, I, I could do it. So 30 minutes, and then we have already a system up and running, and we can already consume um, machine translation from the cloud through the edge. Yes? So from a licensing perspective, you either buy a generic language pair, which comes with a generic model, or you buy an adaptable language pair. The adaptable language pair also comes with a generic model, and we'll talk about it in the second session this afternoon. Uh, it also comes with the generic model, but you can actually add your data to make this model specific to your content. So this is when you need to uh, use a trainer to train them. Uh, you can run as many training engines as you want, but each training engine will require GPU. So having 20 training engines might be very costly, uh, but actually when you create and you create um, training jobs, they will be queued, so they will process in basically uh, in a row. So you only need one training engine configured on uh, a host with a GPU. If you have two GPUs, yes, you can have two training engines, so you can perform two trainings in parallel. Yes. Uh, so, Edge is basically. So the question is: Is it linked to Outlook? Um, you can actually. We have a connector that you can use to install on Outlook. So it's a plugin that you install in Outlook, and it will consume machine translation from Edge. Um, I will show a demo of this. I think on Thursday. So we're from basically any Office application, uh, Outlook, you can use it in Word and get access to a tab and translate your document automatically, but consume it from your uh, Edge installation. Any other question? Yes. Yes. So we have only one Spanish, which is covering the different uh, variants at the moment. Um, we can, if, you know, if it's necessary, build models that would deal with specific variants, usually in the English to the language uh, direction. So we have, for example, an English to Brazilian Portuguese and an English to Portuguese Portuguese. Uh, we have English to French and English to Canadian French. So we could definitely build uh, an English to Spanish Latin America. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. So the connectors that we have, so the desktop plugin that we have for Office um, or for the web browsers, they all work either you know, with Edge or with Cloud. Uh, so you can really decide which machine translation solution is you know, best adapted to your requirements. And all our plugins can communicate with both. What are the use cases where you need the Edge? Yes, so why do you need Edge, basically? So Edge is installed on premise. It's fully secured. With Edge, your data never leave you know, your protected environment. So you don't have to send it to the internet somewhere. So even if Big Global is also secure, in some industries, there are specific rules. But for specific data, it needs to remain on premise. Another advantage of Edge is performance. Usually with cloud-based solution, you don't have a uh, guarantee on the performance and the speed at which your content is processed. And also, depending on the subscription plan that you have, you may be limited in the volume that you can translate. 
With Edge, there is no limit on the volumes. You buy processing units based on how much content you want to translate and how quick you want to get it translated. And by offering this Edge cloud architecture, you can actually build an hybrid system. So you can keep and have locally installed language pair for either high volume of you know, content or content that is very sensitive, you want to translate it locally. And then you use cloud for maybe lower volumes languages or content that is basically less sensitive and can actually go to the cloud to be translated. Yes? Oh, yes. So this is the one on the right. Me. So the license will allow you to install Edge, create a job engine. You will still need a big global subscription if you want to enable Edge Cloud. OK, great. So let me, let's see if we can continue actually with the presentation. So any other question on the installation itself? Uh, we've reviewed the configuration. Uh, so the web UI by default is published on port 8000. Uh, so if you just start on, you install it and you start with like no port, it will not work. You won't access the UI. You need to specify port 8000, which is the default. The API is published on port 8001. Okay, so we, we are going to do some API calls. You need to specify port 8001 if you want to reach this API. And these ports can be changed. Huh? If needed, you can just change it. We have configuration files for this. Um, just going on, so this is what we did. We went to deployment, so let me go through this. We did everything live. Okay, from the installation of the job engines. So again, when you get the slides, you basically will have all the step-by-step installation procedure. Then we configured Edge Cloud. And we created a translation engine and everything is available from the quick UI. Great, so we have basically, what, 20 minutes left? So let's cover APIs. Right now we, we have two systems. Um, one is Edge uh, that we just installed, so we'll be able to start making some API calls. And we also have MT from the cloud, so you can actually, which also comes with an API. So both systems offer um, an API that you can use to consume machine translation. They are a little bit different, or some like subtle differences. We'll you know, continue to work on converging them and making sure that they are uh, almost identical, but there will always be some, some, sub some subtleties. Um, why an API? Because, you know, not all customers need just the UI. Sometimes you want to integrate machine translation in workflows to process um, documents and text automatically. So it is available for both products. It's fully documented. Uh, so we have very good documentation. Actually, when you install the Edge, let's go back to there, you have uh, let me check which one I want to show you. Let me exit the presentation, sorry. When you're in the edge, you have the help button. So if you click on the help button, you will get access to uh, the full documentation and you have the REST API guide. Huh? So they all come pre-installed with the server the first time you install it. And then you have basically everything fully documented and we have the same for the cloud. All right, so you can see uh, all the different, ev everything that you see in the UI is actually available also in the API and more. Huh? So you have all the information about how to authenticate users, uh, how to perform translations. So everything is there with, you know, uh, examples on how to use it. And this is what we are going to do right now. So fully documented, you have code samples available. Um, we support multiple authentication mechanisms. You can either use 
username and password to generate bearer token uh, that you can use for authentication. We also support uh, API keys. Uh, so in MT Cloud, it's client ID and secret. In uh, MT Edge, it's basically an API key per user. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will show you how to retrieve this API key. To perform translations, we have basically two types of translation requests. Uh, one is called synchronous, and the other one is called asynchronous. There are differences in both of them. The synchronous translation request is basically what we do in Quick Translate, uh, when you type a small chunk of text and we get it translated. Uh, with synchronous, it's, it's called synchronous because when you send your translation, the, uh, s your translation request, the translated document or answer will be part of the server answer. Okay, so you don't have to monitor for response, it's just part of uh, the uh, server response. So it's very good for, again, small chunk of text. You know, don't process documents with this, because then you will just have an open thread uh, to the server that might actually time out at some point, and you will uh, never get a response. And it's text only, uh, so it's not like uh, you can process PDF files or Word documents. This is mainly intended for small chunk of text. And then you have the asynchronous, uh, so what we call async. So for asynchronous translation requests, when you submit your translation requests, then you will receive a translation ID as part of the server's response. And you can then monitor the status of your translation by using this translation ID. And once the translation is successful and completed, you can actually retrieve it when it's done. Okay. So this is suitable basically for any uh, over translation requests, including the one that deals with large files. And it supports both, of course, text and files. OK. Cool. So a typical workflow that we are going to, again, uh, do right now. First thing you need to do is to authenticate uh, to the API. Then you can actually retrieve the list of available languages so you know from which language you can translate to which languages. And you can then submit a translation. So typically, most of the cases, it will be async. Uh, you can use sync if you have a specific workflow with small pieces of text. Then you can monitor the translation request status. And once it's done, we'll retrieve the, uh, the translation. OK, let's do it. OK, so. To do it, I'm going to use uh, Python. So same thing, if you scan the QR code, you will get the Python sample code, both for the edge and for a uh, cloud. Uh, so I'm going to use with edge first. Let me try to make this bigger so everyone can see and read, and it doesn't hurt your eyes. OK, great. So first thing we need to do, and I, in this basically in this Python uh, file, I'm going to use two variables. One is the URL we want to connect to to access the API, and the second variable will be my API key. Okay. So first thing we need to do is to update the IP address of this server to access the API. So we are going to use, which one was it? OK, so this is the Windows one that we just installed, right? So let's take this, it go to my Python code, and let's paste it. So all my API requests will start with HTTP. This IP will use port 8001, and then slash API slash v2. OK, and then we'll construct all our requests using this uh, URL. Then we need to authenticate, so we will need an API key. So two options, either we uh, use username and password to retrieve a token, or we actually use the API key from um, the system. So to retrieve your API key, when you have Edge installed, you need to go to your account details. You go to my account, and as you can see there, there is the API base URL. So I'm using a machine with an internal host name, which is this. Uh, so this is why I'm using the external IP. 
but most more importantly, this is where I can get my API key. Mm. So I can just copy my API key, go to the edge here, and paste my API key. Great. So let's enable this. Let me clear. Sorry, I will just maybe make it a little. Great. So now wh what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the API. So I'm going to construct a request. So in Python, we use uh, requests. And then we are going to go and get using the URL that we define here. And we'll append slash hosts to this URL. So it's slash API slash v2 slash hosts. And we will authenticate with our API key. So I will use the parameter auth. And I will pass my uh, API key through this request. And then I will display this. So the result will be a JSON file, a JSON, but I will uh, display in my on my screen. Right? So the, the real thing is this huh? request get slash host. So let's do this. Ah. Let's see. So we'll do some troubleshooting, right? Uh, Let me verify the address. So that's the right one. API v2. Let me verify my key. Did I, ah, I didn't copy the right key, I think. Let me check. Mm -hmm. This is different. OK, let's try again. OK, so you need to use the right API key, of course, if you want to have a JSON back. So this is what I got back from the Edge API. So a list of hosts, a list of language pairs available. So it's listing all the big global language pairs that are available as part of the Edge, like the empty cloud language pairs available as part of my subscription. I get the name of the host of my master host. And I can see which translation engines are actually started. And I can see that I have my French English and I have my German English, which are the two translation engines that we started in the Edge. So let's clear this. You can also make specific requests. Uh, so if I now I, I put everything in my um, response host and my ETS host uh, variable, so I can basically ask, OK, show me or display only the host name which is on the first item on the host in my uh, JSON response. So if I execute this, I will get basically the name of the master host. Great. If I want to get the list of specific language pairs which are started on this server, I can use the following request. So I will construct it with so the same URL, but instead of host, I will append language pairs. OK? And the rest is the same. I'm getting the JSON and displaying it. So let's activate. So result is a JSON. Language pairs. Then I get all the different informations. The source language, French. The target language. The domain. Is it a generic? Is it an adapted? So you get a lot of information about which language pairs are actually available from this system. Okay, so it's a very good way to know, you know what type of translation can I do on this box. So we have French to English, German to English. Now we can start doing a quick translation. So let's do a quick synchronous translation. So basically, I will use a variable text to translate. So ceci est un test, this is French, with Edge. Before performing a translation, you need to encode with Base64. So whether it's text or a file, you encode it with Base64 before sending it to the URL. This is one of the difference with uh, the empty cloud. So what I'm doing then, I'm doing a text to translate base64, which is my text to translate encoded base64. I'm defining a couple of parameters that I will need to pass to the API. Um, one of the parameters is the language pair ID. So if you remember, we just made a request 
to define, uh, to list all language pairs available, and this is a language pair ID. So this is what we ne you need to use if you want to perform a translation with a specific language pair. Or you can use the automatic language detection. So for this, you will put out instead of uh, the language um, code. So out, and then you still need to specify to which language you want to translate. So in my case, eng for English. As a parameter, I will use input to provide the text to we want to translate. And then you can submit you know, other parameters such as encoding. I would say my text is encoding using ETF yet. And once you have these parameters, then you can create your request. So the request in this case is not a get, it's a post. I'm posting to the API a translation request to the URL slash translations slash quick. And then my parameters and my authentication. So I will retrieve this quick translation okay, and we'll display it as a JSON. We will extract the response. So the response will basically be stored in translation. It will be encoded base64, so I will need to decode it to be able to display it. So let's execute this piece of code. Great, so this is basically the response that we get from the server. You can see that we have detected that the source language was French, and because they have French to English installed, it was able to translate my sentence using this specific language per ID. Encoded base64, it's this. If I decode it, this is what I get. If I put some German in there, it should also, so my German is a bit rust rusty, but let's see, sign test. Right, this time it detected German, it used ger ang generic language pair, and that's the translation to English. Cool. How much time left? Five. Five minutes. Great. So let's finish with an asynchronous one. Right? So the asynchronous, as we said, uh, you post your requests, and the server's response will be a translation ID. And this translation ID, you will be able to monitor it to get the status of this translation. So we'll construct it in almost the same way. You encode it with base64, then you provide some parameters. So same type of parameters. You need to, the mandatory one is the language per ID. And if you don't specify a language per ID, you can use the automatic detection and the text to translate. Okay. And then we will construct, sorry, we will construct our URL with slash translation. So API slash v2 slash translations. We'll use our uh, API key for authentication and we'll pass the parameters. And then in there, I will just display the translation ID that I'm receiving from the server. So let's execute this piece of code. So basically, you know, it's immediate because I'm posting my request and I'm immediately getting a translation ID. So this is the translation ID I'm getting. So, and this is the text I want to translate. So now I can monitor the status of this translation ID. To monitor it, I will get, so I will use get, I'm not posting anymore, I'm getting the status of this request. Uh, so I use my uh, URL slash translation and I append the translation ID, uh, as you can see here. But I'm using then the same authentication. So let's see what I'm getting. So I'm getting a JSON. So this JSON is providing some, me try to display it fully. So information about who posted the request, uh, the format, text plane, a uh, couple of parameters, which language pairs uh, was used, and what's the status of this translation. Succeeded. As you can see, there are many more uh, additional information about this translation, such as the size of the request, the size of the output and the timestamps, you know, how long it took to complete it. And the progress is 100%, so it's finished. So now that I know that this translation has been 
uh, finished, I can actually retrieve it now. So how do I retrieve it? I will use slash translation happen uh, to my um, URL endpoint. Then I will add the translation ID and I will append slash download. So I'll retrieve this content and decode it base64 and display it. And then I get my translation uh, as part of the results that I get from the server. And if I go back to my, no, it's not this one. Yes. If I go back to my uh, edge UI, I can go to my translation queue and I can see the asynchronous API calls that we just made to translate some text. Uh, so I can see that this user did it, he did it two minutes ago, and I can also from there download the result of the translation and display it directly in clear text. Any question about the API? I think we still have two minutes for questions. So in the way I used it, the memory was processed by the Edge job engine and then sent to a translation engine that is actually in, in the cloud. So sorry, I'm not sure I, I got the first part of your question. Yes, yes. So if the same segment is going to, so if I send to translation again, it will be used from the cache of Edge. So it, it doesn't send it to the translation engine again. Exactly. So there is a cache mechanism. Uh, we cache uh, the 100,000 latest segments uh, in the memory, in the, edge of the, in the Edge memory of the master host. Yes, so if a server goes down, you need to restart it, then the cache is basically flushed. So you, it will start to send translation again to translation engines. The cache is only in memory. Cache is not stored on disk. So uh, if you restart the server, you don't have the cache. But the cache is basically, you know, it's not growing. We keep only the 100,000 latest segments. But if you resubmit the same document again, then yes, we use a cache. So you can get very high throughput then. There was another question? Yes. Uh, so we only provide, so this is a RESTful API. We provide uh, sample codes, but we don't have like a layer that can use, you know, uh, directly like this. And for the embedded API, it's C++, C Sharp, and, and that's it. Um, I don't think so. This is something we can give to you uh, if needed. Yes, a code sample for C++ is actually part of the installer package. So when you install it and you say yes, when you install the embedded API, you get code samples there. OK, so I think we're right on time. Yes, sure. No, 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 no. Well, you need a license just for Edge. Uh, the license includes the language pairs that you can use locally and the number of processing units that you can allocate to each translation engine to reach the throughput you want. Uh, but Edge comes with UI and API. There is no separated license for API. OK, so I hope it was useful. Thank you very much. <laughs>